Radio Trade. This is Don Kaufman. It's November 23rd, 2022. Doing the Theo Trade evening video here on a Wednesday afternoon. Ah, some holiday trade and a holiday it is. Thanksgiving tomorrow right around the corner. Of course, it's going to be a half a trading session on Friday. And uh, it's a festive title to this evening's video, Turkey or Dove? What? We're in the FOMC minutes. If you guys were unaware, the FOMC minutes, they came out this afternoon. In fact, you can see a degree of the volatility right there on your chart. And that happens to be none other than uh, 2 p.m., 2 p.m. Eastern time. There's the FOMC minutes. And the FOMC minutes uh, kind of took me a little bit by surprise. They were, well, a little bit dovish, a little bit hawkish. And what that basically means is, in terms of those uh, FOMC minutes, uh, the first thing to remind yourself is the last Fed meeting happened prior to that major CPI print. And the CPI print came in a little bit light, the market exploded higher. But when I'm talking about partially dovish, okay, or partially hawkish, instead of a hawk, we're just gonna replace that partially dovish or partially turkey, um, that basically means that, uh, part of the committee was a little bit softer on rates, like eh, maybe we won't hike and okay, they were again dovish and the other portion of the committee was extraordinarily hawkish or in this case what we're calling Turkey, where uh, they're actually looking for possibly another 75 basis point hike. But the market, uh, it liked it. It liked it because I don't think anybody would have thought that the Fed was going to take that, that degree of a softer stance and they did. Um, and quite frankly, it took me by surprise, but on top of it, I'm actually surprised that the marketplace didn't explode higher. Listen, one of the things you got to understand, yeah, we're in some holiday trade right now. I mean, the S&Ps throughout the course of the day, they've only done about 1.1 uh, million contracts. If you don't speak total geek, what does 1.1 million contracts really amount to? Uh, the answer to that is found right here. Okay. Well, the first three trading days of this week, they've been light. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. Listen, volatility tires traders out, including myself. I mean, this has been an exhausting year. So the volatility is starting to die down a little bit right now. Don't all, you know, I keep saying this, do not get off your game because that's what markets are great at, especially volatile markets. Everybody's like, it's a rally, it's a rally. But look, what we've really come to is a, a little bit of a fork in the road right now. So what you're looking at is a, uh, a 30-day, one-hour chart inside of the S&Ps. We're right to the upper edge of a range. It has been an incredibly, incredibly tight range. So the upper edge of the range is pretty much where we're trading, the lower edge of this range. Okay, and I'm actually going to uh, identify it. I love to identify this. This is not, by the way, like a volatility box or anything. It's uh, 39, 31 is the lower edge. Where's the upper edge? Probably somewhere around less like 40, 30. You can see we even crested out to 40, 50, but uh, lo and behold, all we're basically in is just channeling back and forth. Listen to me, the marketplace is tired. Traders are tired, okay? Coming back after this, uh, you know, it's it's not really, is it a three-day weekend? So you get Thursday off. It's a half a trading session on Friday. People are going to come back, though, swinging next week because you really only have about two and a half weeks then before we get into full, like, you know, holiday Christmas kind of swing in this marketplace. So keep your helmet on, people. I'm telling you, I have seen this movie before. The other aspect that kind of held the markets back to some degree is right here inside of the SPX. It's the mother of all products, the SPX. And if you take a look at the SPX, which you're actually looking at, I'm going to zoom in for you. This is the expected move for the week. So we were expecting about uh, a $72 move. That's $72 higher, $72 lower. And we came within a, a hair of the upper edge of that expected move. In fact, it's worth taking you into an intraday chart. Look, the upper edge of the expected move is right here. It's at uh, 4037. We traded as high as 4033 and change. I mean, I don't know, from where I sit, chicken is done. But hey, there's still Friday. On Friday, you know, this is this is pretty much though tagging it. If it's within, you know, four or five points of it, okay, God, come on, give that one to me. Anyway, the, the big move though on the day, it's not so much the S&Ps. Clearly, it's not volatility. Bonds, bonds actually have just been grinding, okay, to the upside. And this makes a lot of sense right now because again, 
if the uh, if the Fed is getting a little bit nervous, when I say the Fed's getting nervous, are they really getting nervous? Are they starting to say like, oh, you know, we've done like, you know, what, four 75 basis point hikes, okay? I think the, uh, the bond market right now is just kind of listlessly moving a little bit higher. Now, if the bonds are moving higher, okay, what that translates to is ever so slightly the interest rate is going to come down. Okay, so if you take a look in terms of rates, like I like to look at the TNX, you can see the rates coming down just a bit, but uh, all of that can change inside of one trading session. All we have to do, okay, all we have to do is get like another hot CPI print, and you know, nobody seems to factor that in. So the Fed is very much undecided at this point in terms of what they're going to do in the uh, in the December, I believe it's December 14th meeting, uh, they're undecided. They're at least going to raise 50 basis points, but there's still a shot that they're actually going to raise 75 basis point, and it's going to be data dependent. And the next set of data that comes out is going to be the jobs number next week. And after that, again, hey, you're going to have to go through another CPI print. That's going to be fun. You imagine you get another hot CPI print. It is over, people. It's over. Anyway, so the Treasury is kind of backing down just a little bit over here. And you also have the dollar, which is printing substantially lower. Now, again, these are bullish signs right now for the marketplace. But as I've reiterated, I just I wouldn't trust this marketplace as far as you can throw it. Um, the big mover on the day, okay, is is to me it's oil. Okay. And it's interesting to see the dollar down and oil down. The reason I'm actually pointing to oil is uh, to me, oil being down, down this substantially is completely and utterly, it's recessionary. Okay, they're basically saying, oh, well, we're going to go into a, a global recession and, uh, okay, and, and everybody's going to try to convince you, nah, there's a supply, there's a lot of supply out there, okay? But this kind of price action when, when oil is down, you know, four or five percent in a day with the dollar down, put that into account that the dollar's also down by one percent. Oil looks like it's actually going to cross through $75 a barrel and it looks like it's going to keep going to the downside, okay? To me, that's hideously recessionary. So, the big question, we'll talk about this on the weekend update, and I'm going to record, of course, on uh, Friday as well, is uh, on that weekend update, all right, when does good become good and bad become bad in terms of news? All right, last thing we are actually going to cover okay, uh, on this video here is so when I say, you know, uh, be a little bit cautious, I'm going to tell you exactly why, all right? You've actually got VVIX that is starting to, uh, to actually pop back to the upside here. And skew skews back to like 116. It's the highest print we've seen in skew since all the way back uh, here, which is back uh, about a month ago. So going back to uh, October 21st, skew is starting to pick up and VVIX starting to pick up. What does it tell you? Well, people are hedging. It's bottom line. People are hedging. And the marketplace may be grinding higher, but I am telling you right now without unequivocation, and I'm going to talk about this in the weekend update on Friday, it is well worth your time to take some downside shots, okay? Cheap downside shots. I will talk about them extensively, extensively on this weekend's update. With that, that's uh, that's pretty much it for this evening's video here in terms of turkey or dove, okay? Those FOMC minutes were definitely a uh, split decision. Thanks, everybody, and have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.